الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسوله النبي الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله صدق الله مولانا العظيم My dear respected viewers I greet you with the Islamic greeting of peace السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Peace be with you and Allah's blessings and mercy. Alhamdulillah, in our previous episode, we have discussed two problems that the world is facing today and how the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam gave a very simple solution to the very big problems that we have today in this world and mankind is suffering. Who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He is a man who lived 1400 years ago in Arabia, in a society that was known to be Ummiyin, an ignorant society, an arrogant society. But despite that, his society would deprive women from their rights, would oppress the poor. The Prophet ﷺ is a man who granted women women rights, who protected the rights of women in his society, who protected the rights of the oppressed in his society, who tried his best and gave solution to the problems of poverty, hunger and famine. This is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my dear viewers, gave solutions to these problems. What we need to do is we need to study the seerah, find out about the problems, and then follow the seerah of Rasulullah, which means to implement the solutions that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam gave and presented to mankind. In today's episode, we are discussing the problem of economic exploitation. The problem of economic exploitation that the world is facing today Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded to eliminate this problem. He commanded for economic justice. And how did he present and what system did he present for an economic based just society? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gave the concept of economic justice and benevolence in Islam. And this indeed is an effective solution to eliminate the problem of economic exploitation in human life. What is fundamental, as I said, is to implement the solutions that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gave. One of the verses of the Qur'an that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that give, gives a solution to the problem that mankind is suffering is وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba, Allah Almighty has said that they ask you what to spend. The Sahaba asked Rasulullah ﷺ what to spend. And Rasulullah ﷺ then gave the solution and gave the answer to their question. What to spend? Qulil af. Spend whatever you have in excess. Whatever you have in excess, spend that in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the people that are deprived, on those that have not. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave another revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In Surah An-Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 29, Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ O believers, do not eat up one another's wealth wrongly. Injustly, unfairly, 
do not consume, do not take each other's wealth unjustly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam also eliminated the concept of interest, usury, and he gave an economic system that was interest free, it was based on an interest free. And Lu'ina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akul riba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cursed people that economically exploited others through providing them with with money, providing them with loans, but in return would demand excessive payments, would in, in, in demand, in return would demand interest. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa cursed such people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded also to eliminate the problem of economic exploitation. He commanded us for, for charity. And the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to spend out from one's wealth and feeding others to eliminate poverty, hunger, and famine. Rasulullah said, Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you in terms of food, in terms of clothes, you have to include among the people that use, you have to include, you have to share it with others. And Rasulullah said, Wa fi amwalihim. That in your wealth, there is a part that is and that belongs to those that ask you, those that are needy and ask you. That the people that are sail are beggars, are questioners, and question, remember, that what you own, that wealth that Allah has granted you, there is a part of it that belongs to these people. And then Allah, Holy Prophet وسلم, said, well, mahroom. And similarly, there is a part in that wealth that belongs to those that do not ask you, those that do not question, those that because of their dignity have no chance or have no way to ask you because they, they simply do not want to. They feel humiliated by asking Remember them also, وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقُّ لِسَائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ Even among your wealth, you have also a part that belongs to these people, these brothers and sisters of yours. My dear viewers, in today's world that we are living, a recent survey which was done by the Credit Suisse Global Wealth, it is a global wealth report in fact, it's, it, it gave shocking information, shocking facts, that is, that currently, in 2015, 1% of the world's population, 1% of the world's population owns 50% of global wealth. 50% of the world's wealth is owned by only 1% of the population, which means that almost 110 trillion dollars are owned by 1% of the world's population. 110 trillion. 1 trillion is a thousand times a billion. A thousand times a billion is 1 trillion. And 1% only of the world's population currently, according to this report, Global Wealth Report, owns 50% of the world's global wealth. This is a very shocking information that we have received. Imagine, if we take, for argument's sake, this information, and, and, and we do some small, very basic calculations, that if only 1% of the world's population, the richest 1%, that own 110 trillion US dollars would pay zakat, which in Islam is at least minimum two and a half percent. Two and a half percent. If they would pay two and a half percent of their wealth that they have of 110 trillion, that would be almost three trillion US dollars. Three trillion US dollars. Do you know how much that is? If that money would be distributed among the poor people of this earth, 
In fact, if this would be distributed among the 50% of the global population that lives in poverty, then each person would, be, would receive approximately 800 US dollars. 800 US dollars would be received by each and every individual that lives in poverty, which means they would not be living in, uh, in famine anymore, in hunger anymore. 800 US dollars is a big amount, my dear viewers, in certain countries and the countries that have, for the majority, that are dealing with the problems of hunger, famine and poverty. My dear viewers, this growing inequality of wealth in the world is a ticking time bomb. It is a ticking time bomb. It is absolutely dangerous for humanity. And it is absolutely shocking. 1% owns 50% of the global, of the, world's, of the world's global wealth. So Islam has given a solution to this problem. If the Muslim world only would pay zakat properly. If the Muslim world, the Muslim world would pay zakat properly and, in, and justly, in reality, poverty would be history. In reality, there would be no more poverty in this world. And this is why Rasulullah stressed upon the, the concept of zakat, the concept of charity, ob obligatory charity within Islam. Rasulullah also, through this following hadith, gave a solution to the problem of hunger, famine, and poverty. And he said that feed a person, feed a person, and feeding a person is among one of the greatest, beautiful, noble actions that you could do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with any other thing, any other action, then he is pleased with when you feed another person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam also said, a person who has transport in excess should give it to someone who does not have transport. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person who has extra provisions should give extra provisions to those who do not have those provisions. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam also said, Inna allaha farada ala al-aghniya il-muslimin fi amwalihim qadr al-lazhi yusa'u fuqara'ahum That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fixed a portion in the wealth of the rich Muslims, of the rich people. Inna allaha farada ala aghniya il-muslimin Allah has made it compulsory upon the, the rich people and he has fixed a portion of wealth from the rich people's wealth to the wealth of uh, for the people that are poor, for the people that are struck with poverty. So this is again a solution that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gave in his life. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنِ الَّذِي يَشْعُهُ وَجَارُهُ جَاعِ He said he is not a believer. He was asked, Ya Rasulullah, Man Ya Rasulullah, who is not a believer? And he said, That person is not a believer who fills his stomach, but whose neighbor remains hungry. This concept of benevolence, this concept of sharing that the Prophet ﷺ gave in his life is, if implemented, truly a solution to the problem that the world is facing today. This is why Abdullah bin Mubarak radiallahu ta'ala anhu and many other awliya, many other sahaba would not eat first unless they were sure that their neighbor had eaten and the neighbor's family had eaten. Irrespective of their faith, even if the neighbor was a non-Muslim, Abdullah bin Mubarak used to look after the Jewish neighbor, for example, he used to live with. A person came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Suila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Rajulan, this person asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Ayyul Islam khayrun? Ya Rasulullah, which Islam is the best Islam? Or which action in Islam is the best action? 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, qala tut'imu ta'am. The best action in Islam is to feed people, feed others. This is the greatest Islam. This is the essence of our faith, to look after the creation of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam cursed those people that, that keep their wealth with them, keep resources with them. In fact, al-muhtakar mal'oonun, those people that keep their wealth with them or keep their resources with them and, and they wait until there is a demand in the society and the price of their resources, price of their products now increases, then they would sell these products in the market and then they would bring it into the market. Such people are those that economically exploit others. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam did not merely condemn them. In fact, he cursed these people. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is a mercy to all the world's universe. But despite that, he did curse. And obviously he cursed those that really deserved to be cursed. And among the people that he cursed is those that economically exploit others. And they take advantage of their situation, take advantage of their needs. This is the Islam that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam brought 1400 years ago. And we see in Pakistan, for example, this which is in Urdu known as Zakhira Andozi is a very common problem, is a common issue. And this is done on state level. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallama not only condemned, he cursed people that were part of the problem. A problem that humans are facing, that we are facing today, some people are facing is homelessness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama is the man who solved the problem by presenting a concept of equality in basic necessities, basic essentials and fundamental needs. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama said, لَيْسَ لِإِبْنِ آدَمَ حَقٌ فِي سِوَى هَذِهِ الْخَصَائِلِ That a man does not have a right of more than the following. More than the following things, he has no right upon anything else except the following things. And that is, بَيْتٌ يَسْكُرُهُ A house to live in. A house to live in. Everyone is equal in this, in this need and in the right to earn, in the, the right to have shelter. Every human being is equal and everyone does have that right granted by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama. And then, وَثَوْبٌ يُوَارِي awratuhu. And clothes to, to cover his, his body, cover his body, clothes to, to wear. This is another one of the basic human fundamental needs. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, everyone equally has the right to this. And then he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, وَجَلْفَ الْجُنْدُ وَالْمَاءِ And bread and water. And he to feed any food. Three things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioning in this hadith. He says in three things, everyone has the right upon those. It, irrespective of tribe, community, religion, faith, race, gender, orientation, everyone has that right. And that is, when it comes to shelter, food and clothing, these three things, every human being has the right to these. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama gave us the solution of the problem that we today are facing. That the solution is, if everyone pays zakat, that is obliged to pay zakat, if everyone, after paying zakat, whatever Allah has blessed you with, and you have it in access, and you do not use it, it is an access, then share it with others, those that do not have. This is the solution that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gave. And amazingly, that in Islam, in, in, the, in the teachings of Islam, this is why Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu is the one who laid down the foundations of a social welfare-based state, a state that is a social welfare state 
This concept now has been adopted by Western countries. We find there, for example, people that do not have a source of income, people that are, have disabilities, for example, people that due to uh, any other reason, due to their old age, for example, are not able to earn, are not able to earn an income. They are granted by the government certain grants. They are given, given income by the governments. This concept of social welfare that, that now is adopted in the West was actually a concept that Rasulullah introduced. It is a concept that was applied and implemented in the light of the narrations of Rasulullah, in the light of the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam by Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the second caliph of Islam. But today, unfortunately, in Muslim countries, we find that there is no such system as social welfare. We see that we as Muslims have neglected and ignored the real teachings of Islam, and we are merely concentrating on other rituals that are important, their importance cannot be ignored. But there is far more things that are more important and should be prioritized. And these are how you deal with the oppressed, how you fulfill the rights of the creation of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Muslims and the Muslim ummah the tawfiq that we go back to the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And surely if we go back to the teachings and implement the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, then there would be no question who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The answer would be through implementing the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all would be a true representative of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Until the next episode, assalamu alaykum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.